Okay, what's up, y'all? How are you doing? I'm back here with another coach concept. This video was in response to a question I got. Somebody was asking if there's a video they could go see to kind of um, see how to review your own VODs, right? This is something I talk about a lot. This is something I teach my clients a lot. This is something that should be known by, you know, the average player trying to improve because it's an important part of the process, right? The process is play a game, learn something from the game, and try to shift what you do and then play another game. And then boom, you do that a hundred times, boom, you're a better player, right? Well, how do we actually make sure we're learning stuff from our games or that we're learning the most out of it and we're kind of being the most efficient with our time? Well, we just do a quick VOD review. So, you know, I want to make this nice and crisp. How do we get into our first VOD reviews? If you've never VOD reviewed before, this is kind of a blueprint for you. The very first thing you look at is deaths, right? If you're able to take a look at your deaths, you're able to kind of analyze, you know, um, you can recognize patterns, right? See patterns. Um, reverse engineer is kind of the name of the game in a, a lot of situations when we're VOD reviewing. But when it pertains to death, you say, okay, I died here. This is what happened. What led to this happening, right? It's kind of like a cause and effect. Um, you know, the, the effect was I died. What was the cause? Maybe it was, you know, you didn't have vision or, you know, maybe you weren't leaning on the right side as a mid laner. Maybe, um, Maybe it was a mechanical play. You know, usually there are three type of mistakes when we, um, you know, th th there's three type of mistakes that we make. Um, I was right. Types of mistakes, right? So we have, we have the micro mistakes and this just means like, like mechanical, uh, mechanical plays. You know, maybe you didn't know how an interaction worked. Maybe you had a bad click. Maybe you, you know, for the fight is required for you to take the skill shot and you knew you had to take the fight. So you had to dodge a skill shot, but you did it. Or you had to land a skill shot, whatever. Um, we have macro and macro, you know, that, that's, that's the, uh, that's the game knowledge stuff. That's like knowing what the abilities do, knowing about wave states, knowing about jungle tracking, vision, where ward, what, you know, that's all of the kind of thinking part of the game. And then you have the mental part and the mental part, uh, this kind of, this is the most interesting part. This has kind of the, your psychological approach to the game, kind of your view and perspectives of the game and, you know, of the world itself. Um, and kind of, you know, things like compensation errors, that would fall under mental, right? If you make a decision that's not actually good for you, but you made the decision because your teammates did it, right? We call that compensation. When you do something that doesn't fit your win condition, but your teammates are doing it, so you do it anyways, that's a compensation error, that's a mental error, right? Or if you go into a game not prepared, so it looks like a lot of micro errors, but really you just didn't warm up. So it's like, well, that's a mental problem, right? You think that you can go into a game and be mechanical without a warm up when really that's not realistic. So like that would be a mental error. So this is the trickiest one. This is like approach, um, philosophy, philoso I don't know how you spell. Um, philosophy, kind of your approach to the game, all that kind of stuff, compensation, right? Compensation. So when you review, you know, take a look at your deaths and say, why'd I die here? And then what led to that situation? If it was a mechanical error, could you have opted out of that fight and say, well, yeah, I missed the stuff, but I really shouldn't have been there in the first place. Um, if it was because you didn't have vision, then you can kind of, now we have a pattern, right? And now if you see that multiple times, right? If you see lots of times where you um, uh, reverse engineer each death, you see lots of times where you don't have vision. Well, now we have a learning objective. And now we have something that we can actively learn on like shifting, right? So you say, okay, cool. I die all the time to jungle ganks. Well, what do you have to do? You have to get better vision. You have to get better jungle tracking and you have to get better positioning in lane to respect the, the, the vision and the tracking, right? So that would be an example. Um, so number, like if you've never VOD reviewed before and you don't know what to look at, step one, just look at all the deaths, right? Some of them, if there's not a pattern, like you don't have to make something concrete from each death. But, you know, if you review 10 deaths over two games and you see that like five of them, you just didn't have vision. Boom. There's your learning objective. Right. So that's a very intuitive way to VOD review. Check your deaths first. Um, the second most important thing and the thing that we should be looking at as well is lane phase. Right. Especially as a mid laner or a top laner. Um, lane phase is the most fundamental part of the game. Right. You cannot be good at lane phase. And what I mean by this is like the first 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the game. Um, closer to the first 10 minutes. You cannot be good at lane phase and be bad at other parts of the game. Right. If you're really, really good at lane phase and you have strong wave mechanics and you're good at trading and you do all this stuff, there's a couple of things. 
first of all, if you're good at those things, it applies to other games. Or it applies to other parts of the game, right? If you're in a team fight and you're really good at trading in lane phase, well, you're, you'll probably team fight well because you know how to move, you know how to position, you know how to use your spells, you know how to react to spells, right? So lane phase teaches you the fundamentals of the game. Um, the second part is lane phase is kind of like a chess opening, right? And, and, and what I mean by that is if you have a good chess opening, that you're just ahead for the chess game, right? So you have to have a good chess opening so you can kind of get a lead and then you don't have to play as well in the mid and late game. It's the same exact thing, right? If you perfect your opening in the game, then the mid and late game scenarios that you're reviewing may not have ever happened because you wouldn't be in that position if you just won lane phase first, right? So mid and late game decisions, yes, you can look at them if you have a question. Yes, it's okay to, you know, be like, okay, well, what happened here? What happened here? But really focus on lane phase because you may not have been in that situation if you played the early game better. Um, so lane phase is fundamental. Fundamental lane phase is, um, you know, so it teaches you all parts of the game is what this means. It teaches you all parts of the game. Lane phase is like a chess opening. If you win lane phase, the mid slash late game is way easier. Right. And kind of the example I use is if you're up a thousand gold by 15 minutes rather than just being even, how does the mid game feel? It feels a lot easier, right? You're up a BF sword, you're up a component, whatever. You're up half an item. You get your item spike, you know, like a couple minutes earlier. You get to just, you get to snowball that. The game gets much easier. Um, the other thing about lane phase is it's slightly more individual, right? More individual. And I'm speaking, you know, I'm a mid lane coach, I'm a mid lane player. I kind of speak from the perspective of a mid laner. Um, so even though it is more individual, it still is a 2v2 between the mid jungle and the higher up you go, we call it a 3v3 between mid jungle and support. And you do have to account for everybody and where they could be. So it's not strictly one versus one, but your decisions in lane phase are up to you, right? You get to decide what to do. In the mid and late game, you don't get that luxury, right? If your team is going to go take a fight and you know it's bad, but it's a game deciding fight, you have to be there. So it's like, even though you know that's not the right play, it's really out of your control, right? So you can really take absolute responsibility. And that's kind of like kind of going to be another part of this is absolute responsibility, right? You can't really blame people for losing lane phase. There'll be the occasional game where, you know, you get three man, your team doesn't do anything elsewhere. but even in that situation, if you just soak that pressure and don't die, that's a winning line for you. You're, you're, up, you're giving more value uh, by taking three of their players off the map than, um, than they're gaining as long as you don't die. Sometimes your team will capitalize on it, sometimes not, but that's still winning, right? So you can take absolute responsibility for what happens mid lane all of the time. Um, and it's because it's more individual, where in the mid and late game, you can't. So... These are kind of the, my big personal two tenets on VOD reviewing. If you know, a client comes to me and they're like, okay, I'm getting into my process. I'm really trying to figure out how to get better and I, I wanna review my games. Um, this is where you start. Start with your deaths, start with lane phase. First 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, you wanna have a gold lead. You should have a gold lead eight out of 10 games, right? 80% of your games at 15 minutes. And if you don't, that means you need to get better at lane phase first, right? So being even in lane phase is not good enough to climb, right? You have to be better than your lane opponent to climb. Um, being up half your games is not good enough. You have to be better more often, right? So take a look at the first 10, 15 minutes um, and really see if you have that gold advantage. Things, okay, so th these are like the fundamental, this is all you need to know. If that's good enough, go. Um, so do these. I'm going to kind of create a list of like traps that people fall into. So common mistakes. Common mistakes that people make. Um, so the first common mistake I see is blaming teammates, right? They're, they'll look in their VOD. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a look at my own VOD here. And I'll kind of show you what I do. Um, excuse the ad here. Um, I'll just show you what it looks like when I do it. But what a lot of people will do is they'll kind of see a lane state and they'll be like, oh, well, my teammate, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. No, see what you could have done, right? Take absolute responsibility or you're defeating the purpose of the review. How can you kind of shift that situation? How can you shift your thought process to kind of like not put yourself in that situation, right? So 
Take your responsibility. Don't blame teammates. Um, the other mistake I see is t diving too deep into mid slash late game macro calls, right? Or, or just anything in the mid and late game, right? The problem with this, I talked about this a little bit earlier, is that you don't have control over it, right? The mid and late game is accumulation of 10 unique players, right? And you're only one of them. So, right, you don't have absolute control over these mid and late game macro calls. You can still look at them and you can say, well, this is an optimal, whatever, whatever. But if you just, if that's all of your VOD review time, it's kind of wasted because you're not improving yourself, right? You're kind of, um, you're just kind of improving theory. And it's like, it's not actually applicable. The stuff that's applicable, the stuff that gets results is the, you know, the lane phase, right? Take a look at the lane phase. Maybe look at the defining fights, um, but do not spend too much time on it. So blaming teammates, diving too deep into mid slash uh, late game macro calls. Um, another thing, uh, the other biggest mistake I see is being too emotionally attached, right? If you review right after you lost a hard game, it's very hard to actually recognize what you were thinking and why. Um, so there's kind of two ways that you can handle this, this mistake, right? So to stop this mistake, uh, you either review at a different time. So sometimes people will review before they play, you know, they'll review their, their games they played before. Um, like, like, let's say, you know, I played these games this morning. Let's say I was going to play some more tonight, but before I queued up, I'd review them. And now I'm not as emotionally attached. Right. Um, or, you know, just reset, right? Do some breathing, get up from your computer, grab a snack, come back, then do it. Right. Just give yourself a little bit of time to kind of let that game dissipate, let the feelings dissipate. You can kind of look at it objectively and say, well, yeah, it really hurt and maybe we shouldn't have lost this. But in lane phase, this was bad. And, you know, this was this was not good. And we weren't ahead here and we made a really bad play here. And this was a whatever. whatever right. So. Yeah, do these things, look at deaths, look at lane phase, common mistakes, blaming teammates, diving too deep, being emotionally attached. Um, sitting in review too long can be really damaging as well, right? Um, so I don't, I really don't recommend people just sit there and review their own games for hours and hours of, like, at a time. I would rather you spend that time playing or, or watching other things. Keep your reviews relatively short, especially in the beginning. Right, if you're like diamond and below, a sp like just keep it short, man. Look at your deaths, skim through lane phase. That is plenty. That is good enough. That will get you, you know, to plat and diamond. And then maybe in diamond, maybe in masters plus, we start kind of diving a lot deeper and we start spending, you know, 30 minutes on each VOD or whatever. Um, but until then, like it's just more valuable for you to consume other content or play more games, right? So don't send the review too long. Um, this emotionally attached thing, this is something you see with streamers a lot. You'll see streamers open up their VOD and you'll see them just yelling at what people are doing. This is really, really bad. This is probably the, the most damaging mistake. Um, so really, really be careful to kind of just let some time pass. Don't be too emotionally attached to what happened. Um, okay, so that's kind of all the information for this video. I'm just going to show you a quick example. Uh, let's do this one where there's a bunch of kills. These are the games I played this morning. Um, so how I would review this is I would kind of just open this up. I wonder if I can, uh, it's fine. I would just open this up and I would kind of see all the stuff that's happening. All right, so we see an invade here. Let's see how the situation develops. Uh, I can't really see the mini map because my camera's in the way, but that's okay. Um, and okay, so we see Blitzcrank here. You know, we know their team's here. We, we see our team here. We think that we can get a cheese kill on the Blitzcrank. We can't. We get a flash. We get another flash. Awesome. And we just leave. Cool. So, you know, this play, we can say, all right, you know, even though they were playing Blitzcrank, you know, our team was on the map quickly and that was a good way to look on the Blitz. We're now up two flashes, right? Blitz flashed and their jungle flashed. That feels, you know, that, that feels good. This is a nice play. I like that. Um, and, you know, we can kind of review. You can kind of ask yourself before lane phase, okay, how should this look, right? How do I want to play these first couple waves? How do the trade patterns want to look? Here, I know that um, I can just hit the wave, and if he steps up to contest my push, I just spin onto him and take winning trades. Um, yep, so we see him, spin onto him, nice, turns around and autos. Unfortunate I didn't get a crit there, but that's just, you know, Trindamir gaming. We'll do it again with 40% crit. 
And now I know that I'm just waiting for level 2 so I can out sustain him. I'm burning through his potions. I know I have much more sustain than him. I'm feeling good. We know it's Kane. We know he starts topside. And we know he uh, didn't have flash, right? So I'm not really thinking about anything here. I have to cast E because I missed the auto, which is kind of annoying. That's not optimal. Um, then you can just skim through this and say, okay, this wave's coming towards me. Get another spin trade onto him. This is nice. We can see he oversteps here, right? If something feels good, that's when you want to kind of say, okay, how can I replicate this? Why did this trade feel good? Like even in the moment, right? You can recognize it felt good. Um, oh, he oversteps. I E onto him. I get an auto attack and I take one or two hits from a melee minion and, and like one or two caster bullets. That feels amazing. Look, we're now back up in health and we have more sustain and we're burning through his health potions, right? That's a really, really good trade. Um, now let's get forward a little bit. We see Blitzcrank here. Um, and we're able to just get away from him. We soak the Blitzcrank pressure. It's okay that we're losing this wave. We're soaking lots of pressure. Like, we feel amazing right now. Um, this is Ward. I don't love this Ward, but what this does, is it lets me kind of lean up in this pocket a little bit more. So we can kind of respect the Blitzcrank, right? Not bad. And now we know we have lots of sustain. I'm building up rage and I have my E back up. And I have lots of damage because I have two points in Q. Like this guy. Super low. That was a fortunate crit. Um, and at this point, we know he's responding. We know he has teleport. I just want to get out of here as soon as possible. I don't really get stuck here. Um, okay, we end up staying. And we can see I have a death really quick here. This is a really bad, something really bad happens. Um, we end up staying, which I don't like. I wish we would have thinned it out and then backed right here. Um, but we're going to stay and that's okay. I mean, we have lots of sustain and Shyvana's invading the top side. Like maybe we get a Shyvana gank and that's fine. Here we spin onto him and then miss W and then keep chasing him. So not only do we make a mechanical error, but we also forced a play that wasn't there. And now we ask ourselves, what led to this? First of all, we stayed. So now we're down resources and we're down item advantage. Um, even though we should be up because we have more gold and we killed him. Uh, we're also fighting in a big wave. We also missed both of our spells. Everything about this went wrong. Right? And then we also don't know where Kane's at. We know he's not up here, so he has to be in the bot side. We didn't respect that he could have just walked up here while we were doing this. And now we die, and now Victor's back in this game. Right? So, you know, what I wrote down from that was, okay, well... If you miss the like, if you miss your spells, sometimes you just have to give away the thing, give away the trade opportunity. If we land W, considering he didn't have any summoner spells there, we might actually run him down. There's just no look once we missed our spells. Um, and then yeah, so you just do that, and then boom, we you know keep watching lane phase. We see another death here. What happened here? Oh yeah, this was another thing I reviewed at the time, right? This is really bad because I just didn't see where Shyvana was at, right? This is a lack of information gathering. This is a mechanical error. I'm not F-king up to Shyvana. I'm not looking at her on my minimap. She's on top of Kane, right? My thought process is, hey, let's go kill this guy. What I neglected to do was actually see if Shyvana had the tools to come kill him with me, right? So therefore, um, this is a mechanical error. I just didn't have the information. If I had the information, then I'd go up with the Shyvana. We 2v1 the Kane, maybe get the kill. Um, either way, she doesn't die. And then we can dive this guy for free. And so we either go two for zero or one for zero. Um, or this guy loses a bunch of waves. So if I do the mechanics better of gathering the information and recognizing what's going on with Shyvana, this play goes from a one from one, which is kind of a net even into a two for zero or one for zero, right? Which is huge. Um, oh, actually Shyvana dies. So this was a zero for two because of my, oh no, I guess it's one for two because of my mechanical misplay. Um, and then I start typing. It's like, oh, well, you can't start typing. And, and now I'm tilted, right? This is a really, really game-defining mistake right here. This game ends a lot faster if that doesn't happen, right? So this is kind of, you know, this is how you do your reviews. And then, you know, once I get to, you know, 10 minutes or so, I just start skipping my deaths. Say, what happened here? This death is completely fine, right? I end up, you know, we end up killing three of them. 
and we also end up getting dragon and bot tower here so it's like that's or not bot tower but plates um this one was worse this was a really bad death but that's what it looks like right i'm not going to keep you guys here to watch my gameplay this whole time but um yeah look at the deaths look at the lane phase do not blame your teammates do not kind of stay in there too too long try not to be emotionally attached um and i think that's everything i got i really appreciate you guys hanging out and watching this coach concept if you guys want to see me play or you guys want to get coaching from me head over to my twitch stream or join my discord and hit me up and i will see you guys around i really appreciate y'all hanging out on the youtube y'all have a blessed night peace